So I had to make up my own mind on this. And, and this great website, Cal Matters, does a really good job. And then you're digging in. I'm, I'm texting people. I'm calling people. Elizabeth and I are like, what do you, we have arguments. You know, it was like a really, it was really dope. So anyway, on this Uber exception, because this affects, I'm not going to go through everything on the California ballot because most of y'all are not in California with me. But this stuff affects the whole world. And, you know, on the one side, they're asking for an exception from treating their contract workers as full employees. Um, and they're saying, you know, we don't need to be weighed down by full employee status. Instead, we'll offer them a little bit more money, a little, little tasty taste of healthcare, a little smidgen. You get to like, you get to look at the mask. You can't wear it, but you get to look at the mask. You know what I'm saying? You get to feel insured, whatever. So, but they did come some distance from the total exploitation that they had been running under that would have been required, you know, in AB5. So you see all that and you're like, okay, part of me, it's like, yo, maybe people who work in these service industries and these gig economies, they don't want to be full-time employees either. They want that flexibility. And the union certainly want to grab up as many people as possible. And there's some good and some bad to that. So I was leaning toward like, yo, let them have the exception. Let's, let's have a third way. We talked about it in the house, we're researching. Very smart people saying, yo, let them have that exception, including the California NAACP. But the fact that they were for it, I was like, what's going on here? Like once you realize the game, you're like, oh, you got paid to think that? What else you get paid to think? So now I'm like leaning against your money because I'm like, you didn't tell me you got paid to endorse. So let me dig a little deeper. And I ended up voting no on this. As an Uber and a list, yo, man, like they have spent $200 million to get this exception. 200, there's never been any amount of money like that spent on any ballot initiative in California's history. And this state is made of money. Gold, silicon, silicon, you know, like silicone. And... Uh, it just didn't sit right. I mean, you're trying to buy your way out of this accountability. Furthermore, your business doesn't make any damn sense. Right? Like I could understand that these were profitable entities make it, making a profit. They're not. They are VC subsidized little arbitrage games. They are special projects. They are extracurricular activities taking advantage of people's need to have three, four jobs. And you're going to make them do all that and then they got to carry their own insurance and then they don't get paid for the time that they're waiting for the passenger, only the time the passenger's technically in the car. And, and you can't come up with enough sense in your business model to have a positive margin, yet somehow you come up with $200 million to tell me how to vote? Psh, get up out of here. Get, you know what? And, and shame on the regulators and the elected officials who let it go this far too. I'm not letting y'all off the hook. This little game should have been wrapped up years ago. Now you got these weird norms in the system where people are dependent on exploitation for their income. What kind of box you putting people in? So I say, no, let's have some natural selection up in here. Let's expose these businesses to the real model, to the real environment. And you stand in your own two feet, but you don't get to bend the system to your will like that. And we'll put it over the top. It wasn't the, the payoff to the NAACP head in California. And it wasn't the fakeness of the business model, this money losing venture. I'm, we're, we're unicorns. We're worth a billion dollars. And we lose money every quarter. Really? You're supposed to be the smart ones. Do something smart and make money. I know people out on the corner selling t-shirts got better business model than you. And they don't get all these subsidies and exceptions and bending the law to their will. So cut it out. But the thing that really bugged me, because these companies have such reach, they're in your pocket. When I lived in New York, Uber did this nonsense. Throw a little notification in the app. Tell Mayor de Blasio, blah. You tell him. Don't enlist me in your political lobbying efforts. Are you? That's an abuse of information access. That's an abuse of notification access. That is a. I didn't grant you that right to enlist me in your political lobbying efforts as a business. And then they did it to their drivers too. They put it in the driver's dashboard. Talk to your passengers about why they should vote yes on 22. It's so manipulative. So they're, they're, they're trying to pay off the politicians. They're trying to pay off the, the endorsers and they're bullying their drivers and they're bullying their own customers. 
Without the drivers, you don't have a business. Without the customers, you don't have a business. Don't enlist me in your scam. I want to send a signal to these fake businesses. Free ride's done. If you can't figure out how to make money, then you're not a business. You don't just get to coast. And the fact that there's so much excess capital in the system that you got VCs chasing down terrible business models just to overfund it and get in on an early round so they can pass the buck to a later round and call themselves quality investors, that's also a scam. We got to call shenanigans on this whole thing. Because you got little brown kids out here trying to make real businesses. You got people who've been in the game for decades, older folks who have solid ideas and they can't get none of this money. The banks ain't trying to loan Pookie nothing for his legit business, which is actually cash flow positive. We got still essentially redlining going on in terms of financing of entrepreneurs and small businesses in this country. And there's billions of dollars from people who were never taxed enough going to shambles of a fake ass business plan to then pay off the California NAACP to try to bully me because, oh, we found a black person to say well, we should be subsidized by the state. <sighs> Miss me with this bullshit. Come on now. So that was fun. Again, I was like the raccoon ex excavating, excavating the truth on that matter. Nope. Nope. Not with my vote. So, you know, had to make a little statement about that. If you still in... California, you haven't voted yet. Don't let these little worms off the hook. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You made your bed, now you sleep in it. You try to make a real business. Otherwise, move along. Move along. I'm tired of people celebrating money losing as innovation. I'm tired of people celebrating labor exploitation as the future of work. I'm tired of people celebrating funding your friends as good at business. This is the lie. This is the stuff, it, it hates me. It hates me. Cause this whole time, this whole time I work, what do you do? I work for Uber. We arbitrage human capital. <laughs> Respect to Scott Galloway who planted that thought. He said Uber arbitrages people. Playing them off each other. It's disgusting. Come back to me when you could do math. Whew. All right, so we talked about the baby possum. <laughs> Apparently, I have some things to say. <laughs> Ooh, hydration break. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rachel Kelly. Seeing the passion. Appreciate that. Stephanie, pyramid schemes, the pun schemes. Is right, is right. I think to draw one extra line, uh, when abject mathematical failure is hailed as success and worthy of further reward, that's how you get the current president. That's how you get the current president. Oh, but he's good at business. This dude, $400 million in debt. And that's after Deutsche Bank wrote off $225 million. That's not even counting the people he just outright didn't pay. How many hundreds of millions of dollars do you have to lose before you are not good at business? So as far as I'm concerned, Uber, Lyft, all these cats, they ain't no better than the president at business. Let's cut it out. Stop, stop lionizing this type of failure. This upward failure, which is not extended to everybody. If you're going to extend that upward failure mobility to the immigrant, to the refugee, by all means, to the formerly incarcerated, let's do it. But we all know that's not how this works. Now, you got to prove that you've already failed at Stanford first. That when you got kicked out of school for disciplinary, your parents could afford to put you in another highfalutin school to cover up on all your mistakes. So you never did time. You never went to juvie. It's the same stuff. I'm not saying everybody who runs Uber, Uber should have been in juvie. <laughs> I mean, maybe they could learn something, you know, from kids who've been through some things. But that's not the point. The point is just to heighten the contradiction of who gets the white glove treatment and who gets punched in the damn face. 
Same country, different rules. We got to call that out and we got to do better. Got to do a lot better.